Hi, I'm Haley. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking about how to dress yourself and your kids for winter hiking. So I'm a mom of two. I have a baby who's almost one and a toddler who just turned three years old. I have been hiking for years and years and I have lived in Utah for about the past 10 years and love hiking in the snow. Um, and I've been hiking with my oldest since he was a baby in the snow, so I have a few years experience. So if you are new to winter hiking, my first piece of advice is gonna be to just go on short hikes close to home, test out the gear you get and see how it works for you. I'm gonna be showing you a three layer system for dressing, but it really varies on the temperatures on if you're gonna use all of these layers. If it's freezing, or lower is usually when I start doing a base layer, mid layer, and outer layer for my kids. If it's warmer than that, then sometimes I skip that mid layer. Um, and then if it's even colder, if it's getting, if it's like bitter cold and windy, you might need some extra things to help keep your kids warm. It's always best to check on your kids as you're hiking to see how they're doing. Are they cold? Are they hot? Are they good? A good rule of thumb is to check their chest or the back of their neck. Um, and see, it shouldn't feel sweaty and it shouldn't feel cold, it should just feel warm. I always bring a lot of layers and just keep them in the back of my car because the weather can feel significantly different outside of my front door versus at the trailhead. So I just like to have the layers in my car and then choose what to put my kids in and myself in. I'm gonna show you all the layers that I bring for our winter hikes and I will have all of them linked in the description below. So. When you start off getting dressed for a winter layer, you wanna start with a base layer, and that's what goes against your skin. And for the most part, I like to dress myself and my kids in merino wool, uh, but there are other material options you can use, like polyester is a great synthetic option, or bamboo. Um, you just really wanna avoid cotton, because cotton holds on to moisture and can make you cold if it gets wet, and can possibly even lead to hypothermia. So you want those moisture wicking materials. So here's an example of a wool base layer that I have for my kids. Um, that one's for my toddler. This is a little bit of a thicker one. This is from uh, the brand Explore, which is where I get 90% of my kids' wool base layers. This one's a little dirty, as you can tell, but it gets used. And then for myself, uh, same thing. I love merino wool for myself, so here's a top, and I have the matching bottoms. These are from Kari Tra. Um, and yeah, this is just what you wear against your skin. Next, we're gonna talk about the mid layer, which is what you wear over your base layer. And this is the insulating layer that traps in the heat. Again, I like to dress my kids in wool a lot for their mid layer, um, but I do something a little different and I'll talk about that. But here's an example of a wool mid layer for my toddler. I love this thing. I like that it doesn't have feet so he can wear wool socks with it. Um, but also, if you're looking for an inexpensive option, fleece jammies are actually a really good option and it's what I did when my baby was young for a, year, uh, for a couple years. Um, the one thing you wanna know is with footy pajamas, you don't wanna put anything probably underneath them unless they're really big because if it's too tight on their feet, that'll restrict blood flow and can make their feet colder. So I, if I'm doing footy pajamas, I will just opt for a little booty over there fleece jammies. Now that my toddler's walking, I really don't do that because it would be too tight on his feet. But here's another fleece option I have that doesn't have any feet. So for myself, oftentimes I really don't wear a mid layer or I wear my mid layer as my outer layer. So here's an example. This is just a synthetic jacket filled with Primaloft. Sometimes I will just wear this and call it good because uh, since I'm the one walking and doing most of the work, I'm exerting a lot of heat, so I don't need as many layers as my kids do who are not walking. Okay, let's talk outer layers. So I love buntings for my kids. It's just a great way to keep the snow out of their pants or up their shirt. Um, these are both Rima suits and they're a little bit different. So. This is the one for my baby. It's highly insulated, it's completely waterproof, and it's not very breathable, which is good because my baby is not moving. She's not exerting as much heat um, since she, I'm just carrying her. So I like this option for her. One thing I like to look for in buntings for my kid, especially when their babies is fold over hands, uh, that just helps keep their hands a little warm. These don't have fold over feet, but some do. And then I love this one because it unzips really far down, which is great for diaper changes. It makes it really easy and quick. Now for my toddler, his is really similar. It's not quite as warm as my baby's, but it's completely waterproof and it's more breathable, which I love because he is doing um, more walking now since he's three, so I don't want him to get overheated. 
I love this fur hood. It does come off, but it blocks the wind and snow um, for him, which is awesome. A feature I love on these is when you put on kids' snow pants, you wanna put them over the boot to trap out the snow, and then these come with stirrups, which you slide underneath the boot, and it just keeps them pulled down so when they're crawling around or hiking up in the snow, their pants don't get hiked up, and just keeps the snow out. As I've already mentioned, I rarely wear a waterproof outer layer, and that's because um, usually I'm exerting a lot of heat hiking and so I don't want to be all that heat trapped in otherwise I get way too hot. So this is, this is just another option of a jacket I wear. This one's down, um, it's got a great hood and I love just wearing this or my other jacket when I'm hiking. For my pants, uh, sometimes I just wear regular leggings if it's not freezing, freezing cold. But when it's really cold, I like to wear my merino wool base layers with some kind of water resistant pant on top. These are just my regular hiking pants I wear like in the warmer months, but paired over top, it's actually really warm. And so I love that. You could also get a soft shell. I don't like to wear um, snow pants unless it's getting close to zero degrees Fahrenheit. All right, now we're gonna talk about accessories, meaning your head, hands, and feet. So. Just a regular old beanie is a great go-to for me and my kids. One thing I love is when beanies, for my baby especially, have ties underneath because um, she can't pull it off and it will stay over her ears, keeping them warm. Another option is a balaclava, and this is just you know guaranteed warmth. There's no gaps, so you know their neck is gonna stay warm. Um, it doesn't come up over their face though, so another option you can do is to pair a beanie with a neck gaiter. Uh, or a, a buff, whatever you want to call it. This one's a thin merino wool one, but I also have fleece ones, and that's just to help protect your neck. Um, and you can also pull it up over your mouth a little bit, but you can still breathe just fine. So that's always a good option too. I love neck gaiters. Next, we're gonna talk about hands. Uh, for myself, I have Raynaud's, so my hands get extremely cold, so I choose to wear insulated leather mittens. If you don't deal with that as much, I'd recommend just a pair of um, gloves, you'll have better dexterity. These ones, I don't have the best dexterity, but they keep my hands warm. For my toddler, these are my favorite mittens I've used so far. Um, they're also from that brand, Rayma, and I love them because once you put them on, you can cinch them really tight over his wrist so they don't come up, and they also come up nice and high. On him, they come up about to his elbow, and these are great. They're breathable so his hands don't get sweaty, but they're completely waterproof, so even if he, when he's playing in the slush, he stays dry. And for my baby, I like these mittens. They unzip, they unzip really far up. Um, they're completely waterproof again. These are not breathable, which is good, like I said, because babies, they're not moving and generating as much heat. So love these for her. Honestly, I rarely get her thumb in the thumb hole because it doesn't matter too much with babies. Okay, and now for feet, which I, in my opinion, is one of the hardest things to keep warm. So. For my baby, I have these insulated booties for her, and I love these. They're really similar to her mittens, they're the matching pair, but um, they're insulated, they're waterproof, and I love that they cinch around her ankles so these don't fall off. A little tip is to put um, their booties on first and then their snow bunting. Um, it just makes it a little easier and then it helps keep them on a little better as well. So I love these especially that they are completely soft, so it's good for those still forming feet. For my toddler, I got these winter boots for him. These are have been amazing. They are wool and fleece lined, which has been a really good combo. I've noticed his feet have stayed really warm this winter. Um, they open really far, which I like, and they come up nice and high. A little hack for getting kids' boots on is to use one of these shoe horns, pop that in, let them slide their foot in, and it goes in a lot easier. And then for myself, I've always opted for just a waterproof boot that's not insulated because I'm hiking and exerting a lot more heat, and um, so my toes have stayed warm that way, and I just pair it with wool socks. But this year I've noticed I'm not hiking quite as far and as long, and I'm taking more breaks as my toddler's hiking more, so I'm actually in the market for an insulated boot for myself, but I have loved these. I love that they're high top um, to help keep the snow out and they've worked great. And I just pair them with my micro spikes. I almost 
Oh, I almost always wear micro spikes over snowshoes because a lot of the trails I do, um, they're already packed down. I live in an area where the trails are really accessible and popular, so I don't necessarily need snowshoes for that fluffy snow to stay on top of. And yeah, these just keep me from slipping and sliding on the snowy trail. For my kids, I do also like wool socks for them. These ones are nice and thick, so I love these for my baby. Just as a reminder, you don't want things to be too tight on their feet, so you don't want too many layers, but a pair of wool socks and insulated booties has been uh, has kept my kids' feet really warm, so I love these. Last, I'm gonna talk about a new item I've recently gotten that I've actually been loving a lot, and it's this soft carrier cover for your baby. Unfortunately, the hood is it's detachable, and I did leave it in my car, so I can't show that. But basically how this works is you have your soft carrier. This one is by Ergo Baby, and it is intended for Ergo Baby carriers. I would imagine it would probably work on most other carriers, but just so you know. And what it does, it just clips on really easy with these snaps. And from the back, you can see that you just tuck your baby's feet into here and you cinch it closed to help them stay in. And so when you're wearing them, it's just like a little insulated blanket and it has a hood that so they can wear it when they're facing outward or facing you. It's got a pocket here that's also fleece lined for your hands while I but I don't recommend hiking with hands in your pockets, but you can keep something in there or if you're just standing still. This has really been nice. Um, and just that extra barrier for my baby, especially when it's windy. So that's everything I bring on a winter hike. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for me about winter hiking for yourself or with kids, be sure to leave them in the comments. If you wanna follow me on more of my daily adventures, I'm over on Instagram and TikTok. Both handles are Haley Outside. Um, I do have a blog, HaleyOutside.com as well. I'm really excited that this is my first YouTube video and I have a lot more planned for the coming year and I'm really excited about them. Bye.